Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of the live question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 4th of March 2024. I have got loads of really, 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 really good fabric to show you this evening. So we'll be giving you a bit of a sneak preview of that and also answering your questions that you've sent in beforehand, asking for advice on your sewing and dressmaking projects. So there's going to be lots of inspiration, lots of fabric candy to look at and if you're watching here on YouTube and you would like to ask a question for a future session or you've got any comments or you want to um, add anything at all you'll hear me read out the questions and comments that come in live as well then do just leave a comment below on this video and um, next week which um sorry I can't work out off the top of my head what date that will be in March um, but next week is going to be the last live Q&A that I do um, ahead of just taking a bit of time out while I have my baby. So the Jean, you're going to be in very safe hands. The Jean G team are going to be creating Q and A videos, so we'll still be able to answer all, all of your questions, and we'll still be able to show you lots of really beautiful fabric and pattern combinations to keep you inspired. And um, so yeah, next week will be the last full like live recording of it. But I'll switch over to this week's recording now. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you very soon. <laughs> Bye. Hi, hi, hi. So I'll mention it a few times just because I know it sometimes takes a while for um, everybody to join. But yeah, this is going to be the second last live that I do um, just before I take a little bit of time out to have my baby and leave you in the very safe hands of the G&G &G team who won't be doing live videos, but they are going to be doing little Q&A videos for you. So you will still be able to get the answers that you need to your burning questions. And of course you can always just um, email the shop as well, anytime too. And the G&G &G team will always be more than happy to help. Um, but yeah, I've got a, an absolutely jam packed hour tonight of like loads of new fabrics, loads of questions, loads of things to show you. So be prepared for a complete inspirational onslaught of fabric and patterns for the next hour. Um, and I'm going to try really hard to get through all of my questions. It's, it's weird how it just uh, varies, like some weeks there aren't as many as others, and there seems to be quite a lot tonight. Um, so I'm going to try really hard to get through them all. But it's nice to hear you all, see you all and see where you're from. We've got Cotswolds in East Yorkshire and Ireland. I think I'm going to do from Germany and Norfolk and Wiltshire. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, and London as well in California. Hello, hello, and welcome. Um, hello from the ferry back from the continent. Excellent, you got reception on the ferry, that's good. Uh, Warwickshire and Devon and Dorset. And Auckland, wow, we really are all corners of the globe this evening, including County Durham and Cape Town. Yep, we're, we're, we're east, we're west, we're right round the world, we're north, we're south, everything. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so I have new things to show you. Some of you eagers have been already seeing in the Just Arrived section that the yoga fabrics that I mentioned last week, um, they are online now and they've been pretty popular already, but I wanted to show you them as well. They're really nice. Um, so we've got, I've not got all the colours here, but I've got some to show you. So there's a range of planes. This is one of the planes here. Um, this one is the sea foam green yoga activewear jersey fabric. Um, so so yeah, we've got this in like lots of colours basically. Um, but this one here is um, it's really nice and stretchy. Like you can see how much stretch it's got. Remind me how much elastic it's got. Twenty two percent elastic, so it's really really stretchy. Um, so stretchy that way and then also stretchy this way too and you can see even when I stretch it it's like still staying quite opaque and um, so it's a really good thickness for active wear leggings I mean it's called yoga fabric but basically you could do any sport you wanted wearing these fabrics and it would be absolutely fine Um, so so yeah we've got that green one there and then we've also got this lovely pink one here um, which is the rose pink one. So again, it's exactly the same fabric, just in a nice rose pink. I think we've got a black and a navy. Sorry, I can't remember all, all of the colors, but they are in the just arrived section now. 
and then we've got a couple of prints that are really nice as well so same type of fabric but it's just got a print on it so this is obviously more like a kind of green base it's got these really lovely nice birds on it and yeah quite a calming print for any downward dogs that you might want to do um, and then same print but in um, more of like a kind of warmer sort of pinky colour um, oh, let me see if I can pull this bowl over without knocking lots of things down uh, there we go I think that might be upside down no it's not um, so yeah nice, some nice clouds there plants some nice sort of waves in the background um, so yeah that is the yoga fabrics um, in terms of patterns for them, somebody was asking, I mean like the classic legging patterns, the, the Megan Nielsen Virginia is the popular one, Helm's Closet Avery also another popular one too. Um, and then um, we were talking about active wear patterns last week as well, and I'm sorry, but my memory doesn't stretch that far back. Um, but yeah, you can make, you can make like vest tops out of them or like little fitted t-shirts and stuff as well as well as like leggings and you know shorts and that sort of stuff too so lots of things for the for the the yoga fabrics and um, and then we've also got these new it's like a, a new type of fabric really that we've we've had before it's called bengaline um so this is it here and it's actually waterproof as well so when you like splash water on it kind of just um beads and yeah kind of like runs off um, so it's it's nylon and polyester and elastane so it does have stretch but with bengaline the stretch is more like parallel to the selvage rather than 90 degrees to it and um, so I think it would be really nice for if it kind of feels a bit like sportswear to me as well like I think a nice little zip up would be nice somebody somebody it was either in the week or was it last week they were asking about the itch to stitch Andre's jacket which is like a little sort of hooded like zip up kind of like a sort of sporty type jacket and I think it would be really nice for that and um, any sort of like zip up jacket I think would be cute or the the Arlo track would be nice as well that's a Freddie Patton company one so it comes in a few colorways as well this is a navy one and then we've got like a nice sort of uh, kind of sagey green one and one other color which I'm sorry I can't remember either memory's not good right now um but they are in the just arrived section as well um okay and then the other the other new things that i've got to show you the new fabrics and um, these should be online now they've literally just come in is this complete snuggle fest of a one here look at this very nice obviously it's quite a neutral color but it's got so much texture and coziness to it and um, so this one is the Accru Animal Teddy Bookley fabric and I think this would be really nice for the Friday Pattern Company Pogo Nip um, or the Fibre Mudidi Pullover that's got the sort of zip at the neckline as well I think that would be nice too and um, so that is a really lovely snuggly one and um, if you're still looking for a nice cozy layer and then we've also got um, this one here which again is like a nice sort of bright bright coloured kind of checked fleecy fabric and loads of people before were asking me about the Atelier Jupe Danny jacket um, and the fabric that is in the sample of that like on the sample pictures of the, of that pattern is quite similar to this it's like it's a different type of check and different colours and things but quite similar that sort of like cosy fleecy fabric so I think it would be really nice for something like that as well um, and then the other one which you really I hope I could communicate how soft it feels and um, this one is literally just like you could have a bit of this in your lap and just be stroking it and instantly feel calm it is so lovely and soft and snuggly and smooth I love the colours in it as well and um, so this would be really good for for like a nice little jacket as well or a kind of looser sort of pullover jumper it's not particularly stretchy and um, so it would have to be something that was more oversized or like a little gilet would be nice as well um so so yeah they are they all should be in the just arrived section now and then the other thing that's just come back that was really popular before we've been waiting for it to come back um is all of the colors of this alpine fleece back it's like a sweatshirting but on the back it's got like a really nice cozy fur to it so it feels lovely on the inside you could use it for jumper patterns again you could use it for like the pogo nip or like a kind of pullover type top 
um, and you could kind of contrast it as well like you could have sections of the garment where that furry bit sort of facing out for a little bit of so kind of subtle contrast and it looks really nice so yeah they are all now back in stock so this that particular one is the washed teal alpine fur backed sweatshirting fabric and um, so that is the new fabric updates that I wanted to give you um, I think a few people have been asking questions can you suggest some yoga patterns please yeah the leggings ones I suggested before would be good so the Megan Nielsen Virginia's and the um, Helen's Closet Avery are popular ones you had a lovely coral sweatshirt Jara I think a good few weeks ago I looked on the g, &G site but I couldn't see it yeah if you just search bright coral on the website the listings will come up and we've got them available for pre-sale and the stock should be with us, I'm hoping, in a couple of weeks. Um, we actually had all of the ribbing come in, <laughs> but not the main sweatshirting fabric. So, yeah, we're just waiting for that to come and then we can get all of the pre-orders out. I like the length of your kilo dress. Can you please tell how much you cut off the hem? So what I did is on the pattern, there's a knee line marking. It's like a horizontal marking that says knee next to it. And I literally just cut it there. Um, and then... I then I tried and like made it and tried it on and then I actually ended up cutting another inch off from that and um, so it's obviously just going to depend on your own sort of preference where you would want the skirt to come and stuff but that's what I did and um, I've just made the Andre's jacket and this fabric looks perfect for it ah, okay it's great hi I'd love to make my first blouse can you suggest a good pattern in fabric that's not too difficult and um, cotton lawn's good for a first blouse um, and then the Avid Seamstress, the blouse is quite a popular sort of first simple one. I do have a blog post that's like a roundup of lots of different blouse and shirt patterns though. So it might be worth looking at that as well. There's lots of different styles there too. Um, the the Liesling Co Geneva is, pro is another one that's, that's like fairly simple um, as well. It depends what kind of neckline you want really. So have a look at that. Oh, I've just messaged to see if you're open tomorrow and if so, what time? I'm coming from Scotland, so I'd like to check. We're open 12 to 4 on Tuesdays. Um, fabulous job you have, Chief Fabric sto Stroker. Indeed, exactly. Um, do you have any suggestions for an oversized hoodie, please? Um, the hood hoodie patterns off the top of my head are the Chalk and Notch page hoodie. I mean, I guess if you wanted to oversize, you could just size up um, and make it a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so is the yoga fabric squat proof as how much white is showing through when stretched? I would say it's probably like the most kind of opaque fabric that we've had. I am planning to make some leggings with it. So I'm going to admit I haven't done a squat in it or a downward dog in it, but I think it's pretty good, to be honest. Um, a few people have asked what shirt pattern I'm wearing. Yes. So this is the Closet Core Jenna shirt. Um, and we do, the, it was like not, very, they sold out really quickly the patterns, now they're coming back and um, we've got a big delivery of them coming hopefully maybe tomorrow or, or if not the day after. Um, so so yeah, that will be back online again really soon. But yeah, it's the new Closet Core Jenna shirt pattern. It's quite long. This is view A. You can make a cropped version as well. Um, and yeah, it's in our um, embroidered cheesecloth fabric, which is really, really nice. And the great thing about this fabric is I was actually going to iron it before I put it on. And then uh, I'm afraid I couldn't be bothered. But I was actually like, I think it's OK. I don't think it needs ironed. I'm going to embrace the kind of natural texture of the fabric. Uh, so, yeah, pretty good. And I didn't need to iron it. Um, so I was happy about that. Would the coral fabric work for the pogo knit pullover? Yes, I think it would. Yeah, I think it would be nice. Um, okay, so the other things that I wanted to let you know about, um, if you missed it right at the very beginning, this is going to be my penultimate live Q&A that I do before I take some time out to have the baby um, and then hand you over to the g, &G team who are still going to be not doing a live, but they will still be doing Q&A videos. Um, so, so yeah, I will see you next week as normal, but after that. Obviously, I'll still be here, but I just won't be here at eight o'clock every Monday. Um, okay, any ideas about the new Tilly and the Buttons pattern, please? Mm, I might have a few ideas, but yeah, I think tomorrow maybe it goes out to their newsletter list. So 
there's probably still time to sign up to that if you wanted to find out what it is. And then the official uh, release date is Wednesday for that pattern. Um, okay, so we're, the other thing that is on my list to show you is we've got the new Fibre Mood magazine. This is special edition number three. And we are going to be doing a giveaway on this as well very soon. So watch out for that. We're going to be doing a giveaway of the magazine and some fabric that goes with it. So you can make one of the patterns in the magazine. So, but I'll tell you more about that next week. But yeah, watch out for that one coming up. Um, and then we do also have, and thank you if you've messaged me about this, um, we do have now have another Instagram account as well that's going to be focusing on the events and workshops that we do. Um, so it's called at Guthrie Gani unders, underscore studio. Um, so if you are interested in the events and workshops that we run here and you want to get some extra sewing tips and behind the scenes and yeah, just generally get like a little window into studio life here at G&G, &G, then remember to give that a follow as well. There's gonna be lots of new and exciting content coming soon on that profile um, because it is just very new, but yeah, go and give it a follow if you haven't already. Um, and then of course, a very exciting week because it's kit release week. So on Wednesday, how I mean, we waited forever and ever for it to be kit release in February and now we're on kit release in March already. It's very exciting. And the two amazing new kits that are coming, I'm so excited for you to see them. Tomorrow there'll be a sneak peek of them. And, and yeah, they're definitely more more like the type of projects that you really get your teeth into. There's zips involved, which is exciting. It could be that it's a zip within the same project, or it could be that each of them have got a zip. I don't know, you'll need to wait and see. Um, but yeah, the projects could definitely be worn together if you wanted them to, or just like nice to kind of mix and match with things. Sometimes it's good just to have, have like a nice, all-rounder. It's going to go with lots of other things in your handmade wardrobe. So so yeah, watch out for the sneak peek tomorrow and if you haven't already signed up to our newsletter, make sure that you do that so that you can get first access to them when they go live on Wednesday. Um, okay, so the next thing, I just want to check I'm not missing anything. The next thing on my list is just a, a comment that was on the recording that I put on YouTube last week because we were talking about the Jenna Sharp. Um, and the the way that the instructions tell you how to put the collar together um, and I was basically admitting that I totally didn't really read the instructions that in depthly for the collar just because I've made a lot of shirts before that I've got like you know like a collar stand and an actual collar and I don't know I just have like my own way that I like putting it in and um, but somebody had said, I must admit, I don't usually read the instructions that carefully. I will just attach my collar as I normally do. The same method as you talk through the closet core method looks interesting, more fiddly. If anyone has tried it, I'd love to know how they got on. Um, so, so yeah. I th that, it's the way with a lot of things in dressmaking, isn't it? It's always like more than one way to do things. And I think it's good to try different ways all the time. But you sometimes when you like find a way that you like doing something, you just sort of stick with that. Don't you? Um, okay, so the net, the so onto the questions that were sent in beforehand. Um, and if you do, if you do have any other questions as I'm chatting, feel free to ask them. I will try and keep up with them. I can't promise I'm going to know the answer off the top of my head. If I don't, I can add it on for next week. Um, but yeah, I'll try and get through all of the questions that have been sent in beforehand. Um, okay, so can you tell us more about your hints and tips videos? Are they like a sew along or are they a focus on the tricky bits? So these are the hints and tips video. I'm presuming it's the hints and tips videos that come with the sewing society kits that we sell. Um, so that's one of the benefits of the kits is that you get everything that you need in the kit to make the particular garment and you also get a video that I make with the with the G, &G team and Becca um that sh that shows you lots of like yeah more like tricky bits so the videos aren't designed to be you, they don't replace the instructions you still have to use the instructions that come with the pattern anyway but they might the they, so they will it's not it's not like a specific so long like you wouldn't 
you wouldn't be able to completely watch it and not look at the instructions at all. You still have to look at the instructions, um, but it will explain more of the tricky bits. We usually add in extras as well. So there'll be things like additions to the pattern or like different techniques from what's suggested in the instructions, just so that it um, just gives you like a, a more kind of in-depth or like variety of ways to do things or ideas to do things as well, or techniques to try. And then the, the videos are also based on making samples that are of the, using the fabrics that are in the kits as well. So then depending on what fabric we've actually chosen for the kit, then it will be that you get some like advice or guidance or extra tips on specifically working with that fabric as well. So they are really good, obviously, for completing if you get the kit and then using the video to help you with that project because you've got the actual fabric that is in the video and um, but then we do always try to yeah like include extra techniques so that when you're just generally making other projects in the future as well you just feel a bit more confident about trying other things um, and just knowing that sometimes the instructions might suggest to do one thing but there are other ways that you can do it as well and it's, have, it's having the confidence sometimes to like just know when to try something different and that that's okay. You don't ha always have to be like really, really prescriptive um, in terms of like following the instructions specifically. So I hope that helps and lots of you are saying that they're really good and that they've helped you. So that is lovely to hear. Um, and I'm glad that, yeah, you like them. They do have, I always put timestamp chapters on them as well so that they're a bit easier to navigate through to. Um, and you can get the top tips video as a separate thing to the kit. So if you don't buy the kit, cause you've maybe got the pattern already, then you can get the, the top tips videos just like a thing on its own. Um, so yeah. Um, okay, the next question was, and it's, okay, so some of you might have ideas on this as well. I'd love to hear them. So inspiration for decorative stitches on my sewing machine, please. What do others use them for? I'm going to admit, I do have quite a lot of decorative stitches on my sewing machine. Because I mostly do dressmaking, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't really use them that often. Um, the decorative stitches, my kids love them. They just like mess about in the machine and do do patterns. My little boy's like, I want to do patterns on the machine. And then he'll literally just sew like lines of different ones. I think he just likes pressing the buttons, to be honest, and like picking different things. Um, but you can, you, you could use them in dressmaking projects if you wanted to. Like maybe, maybe like, to, it depends if you sort of like that kind of style in your garments or not. Like you could maybe do it around like a pocket opening or something, make a bit of a feature of it. Or maybe if you had like a yoke in the back of a garment, maybe you could do some decorative stitching on that or along the top of a pocket, like a patch pocket. Um, so, but yeah, if, if, if anybody uses the decorative stitches on their sewing machine regularly for something, then please share. And it would be lovely to hear that inspiration. Um, Jan is saying, I use some decorative stitches on quilts. Yeah, it could be maybe like if you're doing a little like a little zipper pouch or something or you know something that's a bit more kind of crafty or looks like not a garment then you could put it on that as well and um, some people put decorative stitching on jeans pockets yeah another popular place to do it just make the pockets a bit more exciting Um okay so let me see what other questions did I... I'm making a fur coat, fun. I'm guessing I won't be able to use the iron on interfacing because the pile will flatten with the iron. How do I attach sew-in interfacing properly, please? I would just baste it within the seam allowances if it's sew-in interfacing. Um, okay, I've used on quilts and appliques. Yeah, so popular in the quilting projects. Okay, the next question was, can the button fly easily be replaced with a zip on the Anna Allen Philippa trousers? Yes, and she does actually have a zipper expansion pack as well, which covers the Persephone and the Philippa. Um, so if you just go onto the Anna Allen website or search like Anna Allen zipper expansion, then you'll find it. It's like a, um, a PDF that you can buy that's got extra instructions. And I think it has some pattern pieces in it as well. Um, that, that will help you to switch the fly out for a zipper fly. Um, the next question was, how would you interface a men's shirt collar, sew-in or iron-on and what weight? Um, I personally would probably use iron-on. 
And in terms of the weight, it would depend what weight of fabric you were using to make the shirt. If it was quite quite like a lightweight cotton lawn, then I would probably use like lighter weight interfacing. But if it was more of like a sort of thicker cotton or maybe like a poplin or just something with more structure, then probably just like medium weight interfacing would be good as well. Um, we've got lots of different weights and they're either in black and white or like a kind of charcoal and white as well. So, so yeah, that's what I would do. Um, okay, the next question was, what needle should I use for a quilted gilet? One side is denim and one side is cotton. I would say just a regular standard needle at maybe like a size 90, just because it might be quite, quite thick and might be quite a lot of layers or sort of thick and spongy, but I think that should be fine. And then we had, can you take the Merchant and Mills Florence? Can you make the Merchant and Mills Florence less full at the back and how would I do this so this is a it's either a top or a dress that's got um a, a gathered section at the front and the back really um and it is quite full it's it is pretty wide some of you may have seen me wearing mine before and um, I think to make it less full at the back you could just at the set at where, where you're supposed to cut the the frill bit for the center back on the fold um, is just take some of that away so you can maybe take like an inch and a half which would end up being three inches out and um, so you could yeah just take it out of just try taking it out of the center back and um, okay the next one was I'm planning to make the Liberty Alexa frill dress and I bought fabric for it already apart from the main fabric and lining the pattern also mentions contrast fabric which I didn't expect or buy what is this contrast for? I'm also not planning to line it. Do you think that's okay if the fabric is not see-through? It is another re reason to line a dress. So I, I did have a look at this and to be honest, I couldn't really, I couldn't really see, like work out any sort of reference to contrast fabric. So it might be that that's more of like a specific thing in the instructions, which I, I don't have that pattern, so I don't have access to that. But what I would do is just have a read through the instructions and see if you can work out where it sort of asks you to use it or where it refers it, you to use it. I mean, if it's already told you to get lining, I'm not totally sure why it's then mentioning a contrast fabric, to be honest. Um, in terms of not lining it, again, I think that might come down to the construction of it because if it's designed to be lined, then it might be that you have to then potentially finish off like the neckline in a different way if you're not lining it, because it might be that the lining helps to sort of finish off the neckline. So, I mean, it's not, you know, if you if you feel like you don't want to line a dress and your fabric's not see-through, you don't have to. Um, but just depending on how the lining is actually put together, that would be the only other thing I would say to sort of bear in mind is that you might then need to slightly alter the construction. Um, okay, the next one was, again, some of you might have some ideas on this one. I need to have a D stash and my real problem is scraps from pre previous projects. I find it so hard to get rid of them just in case. Any tips on how to make the decision making easier? What type of scraps do you keep and what would you not keep? Is it different for Jersey and for woven? Um, I think, it really depends on how realistic you are about actually ever going to be using them and um, because you can you can do you can do things with even like the tiniest of scraps in fact earlier on this evening i was watching like i don't know some like random reel just came up and it was like a project about i think they called it like confetti scraps or something and it was literally like little shreds of fabric and the, they were just like sprinkled onto a bit of calico and then it looked like it was um, maybe some, oh, what's that stuff called? It's like really thin and see-through. Ah, the name of it's escaped me. It's not, a, I feel like I want to say Hesse, it's definitely not that. What's that stuff called? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's like really, 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 really sheer and fine and thin. Anyway, you put that on top and you could kind of see all the scraps underneath and then just quilted it up. It like stitched through it up and down in like a grid to hold it all together. It actually looked quite cool. Organza, that's it. That was what I was trying to say. Organza, thank you. Purple tree monkey. Um, 
and and yeah so then it, it effectively gave you like another bit of fabric then and then they, she made it into like a little zipper pouch so i mean you know you can you can keep shreds of fabric and do something like that with it but it depends whether you're actually going to be the chances of you ever being motivated to make something like that and um, otherwise then yes yeah, so i think somebody else has suggested like knickers is quite good for jersey fabric so again it depends whether you think you might ever make anything like that as to whether you would want to keep it um and then yeah maybe just like generally what other stuff you like to sew if you if it's if it's really like just garments that you like to make then obviously scraps are maybe slightly more difficult to to actually make something with unless you're going to do some sort of like scrappy project where you know people like the quilted jackets that sort of use scraps or kind of patchwork have been quite popular um or if you like making like sort of smaller more like crafty little projects that don't need much um so so yeah i think you probably need to like be really really honest and realistic with yourself is are you ever going to feel like you want to do those types of projects that don't use much <laughs> much fabric and that and you know if you're not and you're going to be like really honest with yourself and you're not then it may be just best to like move the fabric on to its next destiny whether that's it you know the smaller bits getting recycled or maybe like maybe there's like a sort of local charity group or a school even or um our local charity shop will take bits of fabric as well um so yeah right did i miss any other um right i think yeah somebody asked about a gilet pattern and then we've had some suggestions for that as well um so underscore me have a nice gilet pattern by Burda patterns yeah there's a there's the I am patterns Hathor that's quite a popular one um as well which has got lots of different variations too um closet core have a free poof pattern that you can make out of scraps you can also stuff it with scraps and that's my next project after clearing out my sewing room last week yeah that, I know that's a popular one I make, doll, I make dolls clothes similar to my own make it's a nice reminder of what you made that's cute I used to have a problem with a jean zip, put a key ring through the zip, pulled it up over the button and then fastened the button. Ah, that's a good tip. Um, I made a tailor's ham and used up loads of scraps to stuff it. That's a good idea. Um, the Riley vest by Rebecca, Rebecca Page. Okay, so another suggestion for a vest there. And the, the Peekaboo wilderness vest. Thanks for all your suggestions, everyone. Um, okay, the next question was, I'm making a jacket from Ponte Roma. How can I finish the seam so it looks pretty inside? I think if you want to look, want them to look pretty, then like bias binding is a good option. You could do that. If you just want them to look neat, then maybe like a flat felled seam might work or like a mock flat felled seam. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess if you want to just make them look pretty, then it would be like adding something else on and bias binding is quite a good way to do that. Um, I have made a toile of the cocoa and I want to make a narrow shoulder adjustment as the sleeve is dropping off my shoulder. Will I need to make any changes to the sleeve as well if I do this? I would say, I would say ideally no, you wouldn't need to, no, you wouldn't need to make any changes to the sleeve if you do this. The, it's all, I, I don't have a picture, I don't like, that's all I know, I don't have any other context to this question, but the only thing that was coming to mind was is that the shoulder seam is not particularly wide in the cocoa because it's quite a, you know, it's like a wide boat neck anyway. So then I'm wondering whether you almost need to try and like move, like if you've made a twirl, maybe put, it might be a case of like putting the seam on your shoulder where it's supposed to sit and then actually maybe you need to try and take something out of the neckline. Maybe like the neckline's just a bit too wide. Um, but I would I would ideally try to, yeah, I don't think you need to change the sleeve. I think it's just like the, the neckline and the shoulder area you need to, to um, change. Okay, somebody's saying about the, the contrast fabric in the Liberty Alexa dress. Um, the contrast is mentioned in the instructions, pin wrong side contrast sections to right side of matching sections. So I think the contrast is the lining. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, somebody's made a door draft excluder with scraps, another excellent idea. The Fibermood Gabrielle body warmer vest is good for scraps, good to know. 
Um, spare fabric could be good for applique, covering patches or stains instead of embroidery or for patterns or initials onto children's clothes. Um, and I didn't line my Alex dress as my fabric wasn't see-through. Okay, so, so yeah, it sounds like the contrast is the lining and it sounds like you don't have to line it either. Yeah. Okay, so next question was for the yoga active wear fabrics that I showed at the beginning and the Bengaline waterproof fabrics, would you use a Microflex, Microflex, Maraflex thread? <laughs> it says Microflex. I was getting confused between Maraflex and Microtex needles there. <laughs> would you use a Maraflex thread with them or an overlocker? I think you could do either. Um, I think if you're making something that's really tightly fitted, even if you're using Maraflex thread, um, I would make sure it's a stretch needle um, because the eye, the eye of the needle and a stretch needle is a little bit higher. So it make, it, as the stitches are forming, it makes the loop a little bit bigger, which makes the, the stitches even stretchier. Um, and depending on what you're making, if it really, really needs to stretch, like sometimes I've found even with a Maraflex thread, if it's a very like high, tight fitting neckline, even with a Maraflex thread, you would you still have to use some kind of stretch stitch with it. Um, like gen general seams are totally fine, but it's just if you've got to like get something over your head <laughs> with the Maraflex, sometimes you still you still need extra stretch in the, in the seam with like a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch. Um, do you put your Maraflex head in the bobbin too? Yes, you do, just as normal. Um, okay, the next question was, would the Cobalt Bamboo Blended Twill work for the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Faris Jumpsuit, please? This looks like a really nice, simple one. It's just got buttons down the front and then like a little sort of gathered waist, nice jumpsuit. Um, yes, I think it would is the answer. This is the fabric here. Um, that was in question. We've got lots of different plain colours of this fabric. It's the bamboo blended one. It doesn't crease, which is really good. It's got recycled polyester and bamboo in it. And it's a really good weight for jumpsuits and trousers as well. So the bamboo part of it makes it quite, it's got, it's got like a nice, you know, it's got a nice thickness to it. You know, you can't see through it at all, but because it's got bamboo in it, it does make it quite floppy, which I think makes it nice for fuller styles because then it doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel like stiff or hold its shape too much. It's still going to float and move around nicely. So yes, the answer to that question. Um, and then we had a couple of questions about dressing gowns. So fabric for a dressing gown, preferably natural fibre and fabric ideas for the Merchant and Mills Sunday robe, please. So we do have, we've not got loads of it. It's not been quite as popular this year. But we do have some cotton waffle fabric. This is the Sky Melange cotton waffle fabric. Um, and it's 100% cotton. And it, I would say it's like quite a sort of classic dressing gown type fabric. Um, but you could definitely make a dressing gown. Like you could make a linen dressing gown as well. You could use the Serona linen that we've got as well. That would make a nice dressing gown too. Um, or even the Rami fabric that we've got. I think that would make a nice dressing gown as well. Um, so, so yeah, a few suggestions there. Um, then we had anything with a nice border for a short summer dress slash top. Um, so we've got a, a few with a border. This one's been really popular and it's also got, um, on both sides sometimes border fabrics don't have that. They've only got it one side. But this one's got a sort of smaller one and one selvage and then like this beautiful bigger one on the other. Um, so this one here is the coral foliage scalloped border cotton fabric. So that is a nice option. Um, and then this one's a bit more densely embroidered and but it's got a nice a nice selvage on it as well. You could definitely incorporate into like the hem of a of a top or a dress or or like a sleeve as well. Um, the other thing that's quite nice that I've done before as well, if something's got a little scalloped border like that too, is that you can kind of use it to add in like a decorative little ruffle. So I made, um, it was like a kind of it had quite narrow straps. It was like a sort of fitted top with a sheared um, bit at the back. It was that I actually changed a style arc pattern into a top. I feel like it was maybe the Adriana or something. 
um, and the sew over at Sienna dress is very similar to that as well. That's from one of their eBooks. But what I ended up doing at the straps is that I used that that to make like a little. I used you know like a fancy edge to make like a little kind of frill in it as well. So it's another nice way to use it. Um, so yeah, there's that one. Um, and this is let me get the name of it. The blue sunflower embroidered border cotton fabric, hundred percent cotton. Um, so yeah, I think we've maybe got that in white as well. And then there's this one as well, which is a nice, nice, fresh, bright white one. It's just got a border on one side here. You can see it. It's probably like a little bit more see-through. So I would say for a top, you'd probably be fine. You could wear a vest top underneath it if you wanted. Um, if it was a dress, I would line it. I would just line it and we've got like plain cotton voile, which would be suitable to line it with. Um, it is basically like a cotton voile that's embroidered itself, floral scalloped border, cotton voile fabric, 100% cotton. Um, so a few embroidered options there. Um, and then, okay, so we've had a question here about a good fitting book with clear instructions. So yeah, they, they were the ones that I would suggest as well. So we've got ahead of the curve for fitting. So that's the cashmere book. There's two cashmere books now that, that are both got really good fitting guidance. Palmer and Pletch is very thorough, agree. Um, hi, I have a Janome machine. Does it need a specific walking foot or can any universal foot work? Um, I'm not sure, I don't use Janome machines. Um, I would suggest maybe trying to get in touch with a sewing machine dealer, unless anybody else has got a Janome machine and knows if a universal foot will, will work with it. Um, we have a dealer really close by, Frank Nutt and Kings Heath and they sell all the different brands and they're really good for answering specific questions about types of machines. Um, do you have the sunflower in white? It's beautiful as it's see-through. Um, I think we do have it in white. I don't think it's particularly see-through. I mean, it obviously does have holes in it. Can you like see the little, little white holes that are coming up? But I think if it was a top, you wouldn't need to line it. In fact, even if it was a dress, I'm not, I don't think you would necessarily have to line it either. It's quite dense. Um, do you sell the strap adjusters? I'm just making a Sienna and struggling to find white adjusters. Um, we did have them at one point. I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head if we still have them. If you drop us an email, I'll let you know. Because we definitely did. We were going to use them in a kit once and we ended up not using them. So we had loads of them. Um, sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head if we still have them here. Um, do you still have the blue and white cotton with the pink embroidery anglaise pattern on it? Was that that one? Yes. Um, yes, yeah, she was, okay, so this is the walking foot for the Janome machine. A few people saying yes to a universal foot. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it. The Janome one is much better. Um, you need to know what shank your machine is. Um, can you recommend easy girls dress patterns, shorts, trousers? Um, check out Brindle and Twig. The, a lot of their fat patterns are for jersey fabric, but they're all really nice and easy. I have two Janome machines and both walking feet are quite different. Frank and Nutt are really helpful. They came on FaceTime once to help me with my machine. What, what, oh, that was good. Um, check Janome machine on Janome website. Yeah, I'm sure they would sort of give the spec that's needed for all the different accessories on there. Um, okay, the next question was, can you use stretch denim for the Ava skirt or the bobby skirt? Um, I would say yes. You definitely want to make sure that you're using like a really nice stable interfacing for the waistband though, so that it doesn't stretch out too. I would recommend woven interfacing, like cotton woven interfacing. Um, we sell that in black and white. Um, I've made the bobby skirt in a stretch corduroy before. In fact, we did that as a kit um, and it worked out well. I think I ended up did taking it in. It might just be that you end up maybe like taking it in a little bit to make, because you can have it much more fitted because the fabric will stretch, but generally, yes. Um, yeah, Waves and Wild have good children's patterns and there's a sale this week. Yeah, that's a good recommendation too. Thank you. Um, okay, the next question was fabric for the sweet pea joggers. Um, I've got either, I've got either the cozy color range, which is really good. It's a lovely 
fleece back sweatshirting fabric, um, which is plain, but then it's got all these little flecks on it as well. So it just adds a little bit more depth to the fabric. Um, so this would be good, but you can see it as like a little bit sort of, it's more like a lighter weight sweatshirting. It's not really that thick and kind of spongy. Um, but then if you did want something thicker, then this is our thicker sweatshirting here. We do also have another marled sweatshirting range, which is a bit thicker too, so you can check that out online. This specifically is the Lavender Snuggly Fleeceback Organic Cotton Sweatshirting, and it's much, much thicker. So if you're looking for something that's a lot more cozy, um, then this is a good option as well, and it comes in lots of different colorways too. And um, so that's for the sweet pea joggers. Um, somebody suggesting the poppy and jazz also have simple patterns and lots of gender neutral patterns too. Um, and then there's also, it's not out yet, but the new Tilly and the Buttons book is all on kids' patterns as well. And they look pretty, pretty simple too. Nice, good all-rounder ones. Um, peony patterns have lots of girls' dresses slash skirt patterns. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, the next question was, I bought stretch velvet from you. Is it suitable for the Georgie dress with the gathers? Um, I would say, yeah, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, then a couple of questions on the Jenna shirt, which is the one I'm wearing. Is the Jenna shirt similar to make to the Olia shirt, which is the paper theory one? I need a casual shirt. I would say they're quite different. Um, in terms of the fit, I would say probably the Ollie is more oversized. Um, of course, you can size down, which I did do in the Ollie, and I did size down in this one as well. But I would say that this, that the Ollie, even in the Ollie that I did size down on, it's still quite oversized. Um, the the call the way the collar kind of is generally constructed, like it's got a collar stand and then a collar, it's kind of similar. Um, but the plackets are different. So in the Olia, there's actually a bit of fabric you have to sew on to make the placket. Whereas in the Jenna, it's just like a fold over placket. The sleeves are quite different. In the Olia, the front yoke section is part of the sleeve. So the whole construction around the back yoke and the front is really quite different. Um, the instructions are quite different as well. On the whole, I would probably, if you've not made a shirt before, I would probably say that the instructions for the closet, for the Jenna are probably like a bit more in depth. Um, but both are really nice. I actually love both of them, but yeah, hopefully that's enough. Um, I don't think they're that similar in summary. Hopefully that spots out some of the differences. Um, and then the other question is, how hard is the Jenna compared to the Friday Pattern Company Donny? Um, so I would say the Donny's pretty easy and quick. The way the, that's not got a stand in the collar, it's more like just a sort of relaxed collar that's got a facing instead. Um, and it, the, the Donny doesn't have buttons or anything. So I would say on the whole, the Donny's much quicker and, and it's got less pattern pieces and a, a bit quicker to come together. Um, so I hope that helps. Okay, the next one was fabric recommendations for the new Itch to Stitch Delaware jacket. Um, I would say, sorry, I did look this up and now, I should have made notes so I could describe it to you. I actually can't remember what it looks like now, but I did look it up. <laughs> it's the, so it's the Itch to Stitch Delaware jacket. Um, I'm going to say the cotton twill is a nice like all-rounder, um, which comes in lots of different colours. It's 100% cotton. It's nice and stable. We've used it in jacket patterns before for the Freddie Pattern Company Elford and the Closet Core Kelly, and it, it comes out really nice as a jacket. So that's my top pick for that one. Um, then we had pattern suggestions for a maxi skirt for your striped loop back cotton, please. Um, this is a striped, one of the striped loop back cottons here. Um, this one specifically is called the wide striped navy and white cotton loop back fabric. We do also have the fabric that was in the cocoa kits as well. It's in all four colours. We've got a bit left in all four colours available by the meter. So that is online as well now too. Um, so one option for this one, but you'd maybe have to extend it a little bit if you wanted it to be maxi, is the Sovereign Lana skirt, um, which I think 
it's just got a short and a midi length but you could I think you could probably lengthen it you might have to add maybe a slit at this at the side seam if you were making it maxi just so that you could take a nice big stride and um, but that's one to have a little look at Um okay the next question was green or blue fabric suggestions for the Donny shirt and um, so I brought over some of our Sirona linen colours this the Sirona linen works really nicely for the Donny and um, Hannah who works in the shop has got a Donny I'm pretty sure she's got one in one of the Sironas and um, so I've got a few different green and blue colours here for you it's like the classic navy here then the one in the top is the moss and then this um, sort of brighter blue one is the peacock the navy and then that's the khaki um, but you can also so that they, they're like a bit more stable they're kind of going to hold like the crispness of the collar a little bit more and like hold the shape of the shirt a little bit more the Serona ones but you can also make the Donny out of a viscose as well we've got loads of different green and blue viscose prints if it was more like a print you were looking for and um, I pulled over this what this is actually a bamboo um, print which behaves like viscose and um, because it's very green and um, just as an example <laughs> this is the climbing leaves on emerald bamboo poplin fabric and um, so this is this is a bit more like floppy and floaty it doesn't it won't hold its structure like the Serona well but you can still use it to make the Donny so suppose it just depends on how much kind of structure you want and um, viscose linen is would also be really nice for the Donny as well so you can on the website filter the fabrics by color as well so you could you could just select the green and blue and then it would show you like lots of green and blue stuff and um, if it was specifically those shades that you were looking for and um, Okay, the next one was fabric for the French Navy Lucien Henley, please. So this was like a, a like a t-shirt that's that's a Henley, you know, it's got that sort of placket at the neckline. Um, and we've got a really nice range of organic cotton jerseys for this one. This is just a couple of colours here, but we've got like navy and white and oh I don't know, all sorts of colours. And this is like just a kind of classic fabric. Um so this is the peppermint it's the basics organic cotton jersey so that's what the range is called um, and it's just like your classic sort of nice t-shirt weight which is quite easy to work with because it's cotton it's a bit more stable and um, so it would be it would be nice for that kind of henley style um okay we're getting there still a few more questions left pattern ideas for an off the shoulder sweatshirt slash jumper or at least a very wide neck um the grain line linden is actually quite a wide neck so that's one option and then there's the sovra audrey it's got quite a nice wide neck as well i feel like i might have seen something that's like that in fiber mood but i didn't have a chance to then investigate it but maybe check out the fiber mood patterns in case they have something like that and um, then the next one wasn't a question all it said was tensile linen and um, we do have a tensile linen um, it, we've got a little bit of it, it's in this, this black colourway here, um, black tensile linen, so it's 90% tensile and it's 10% linen. Um, so because it's mostly tensile, it's very floppy, it moves around a lot, um, it's a nice sort of thickness, but then because it's got a bit of linen in it, it's like a little bit textured, it's got a little bit of slubbiness that linen has, it feels very nice and soft, it's almost like it's sanded a little bit. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good weight, it's a good structure, it's not, you can't see through it at all, it's quite floppy, very versatile because you can't see through it, and yeah, just a nice sort of classic one, so I, I hope that is what you were looking for. Um, okay, I'm going to just see if I've missed any other questions here. Will there be a sewing society kit for children's wear? We don't have one planned for that coming up at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, what was that lilac fabric you just showed? Um, I think it was probably this one, the lavender snuggly sweatshirting was that one. Um, two stitches have some lovely kids patterns. When is your baby due? Pretty soon. Um, oh, I just ordered the green stunning. Oh, was that? But yeah, the bamboo one. It's really nice. Very like vibrant, rich colour. Um, I've just made another Donny with a lovely blue and white and green Liberty fabric. Yeah, Liberty is really nice. 
um, for the Donny too. A telly brunette have a jumper pattern that has a really wide neck. Lovely, thanks Cathy. Um, Seasons of East have an off the shoulder. Great. Will you be getting any more of the white slash blue striped cotton with the random animals on it? More came in today actually. I think it should, I'm sure Hannah was going to add it on. Um, it should be, it should be available. Um, I'll, if, if it's not, I'm going to refresh the website when I get home because sometimes, oh, it's a boring technical thing. I have to do like a thing that refreshes it <laughs> even when stock's added on. Um, I'll do that when I get back, but we, it came today. So if it's not on there later tonight, it'll be on tomorrow. Um, any fabric for summer trousers, please? Yeah, we've got loads of different fabrics for summer trousers. And I actually did a blog post last summer that is about fabric that you can use to make trousers with in the summer. And they're all like standard ranges that we carry. So there's the Serona linen, the Rami, there's the Enzyme cotton linen, um, and there's the Smooth Drape, Tensile Twill. All of them are really good for trousers. Um, so you can see different examples of them in the, in the, the blog post to that. Um, can you please suggest any trouser patterns for an eight ounce denim? Um, Merchant and Mills Eve, maybe? Yeah, classic. Um, okay, the next one was a fabric for Agnes PJs, something nice and cool for the summer. So I think cotton lawn is good for PJs in the summer. Um, and I've got a few examples to show you. I got a cut. I don't think these are online yet because they were they were just getting unpacked this afternoon. But they're so beautiful. Oh my god, I love them. So I'll maybe show you them in more detail next week because I've yeah, I don't think they'll be online yet, but they will be on soon. So it's a new range of Liberty fabrics that's all about London. And they're so detailed. The colours in this are beautiful. Like, can you see that? It's got all of the, the different sites and stuff of London. This is comes in another colourway as well. Um, so this is the Liberty Pride and Bloom, um, and then this one, I love this one as well, it's kind of like a take on the underground, um, also comes in another colourway too, um, so this is really nice, these would all make really cool Donny blouses as well, um, and that yeah we've got a couple of other prints as well, the colours are like so bright and vivid, they're so detailed, it's a beautiful range, absolutely beautiful, so watch out for that coming online soon. Um, but I do have just, we, we do have lots of other like cotton lawns as well that are not Liberty ones. I think this would be really nice for summery PJs. This is the Confetti Floral Pima cotton lawn here. Um, and then, or if you want something that's like not as kind of in your face floral, I think that would be nice and cool. Nice light bright white one for the summer flower fans on white Pima cotton lawn fabric. Um, I've just made the Agnes PJs in a double gauze turquoise and I love them. They're so cool. Yeah, double gauze is another good base as well. Um, I just made the Fiber Mood Naomi, Naomi, Naomi trousers in eight ounce denim and they worked out great. Um, I also wanted to say how much I love the viscose linen. As well as my Danny trousers beige and Danny shorts navy, I made a style arc Paramore shirt dress and the beige i know it's such a versatile fabric the plain viscose linen is like good for everything jumpsuits trousers blouses shirts tops dresses and um i watched the trouser blog post yesterday it's brilliant oh good that's good to hear um okay so the last few questions are i totally run out of breath um <laughs> I'm due in July. Congratulations. Good patterns for maternity wear and fabric combos. You want to hold out and wait for my blog post that is going to be out, not this week, but the week after. And I've kind of rounded up some of the patterns that I've been making and wearing a lot during this pregnancy. So there is, yeah, fabric and pattern combinations in that. So yeah, not this week, but next week. The whole post of inspiration for you. Um, please, can you show us the Liberty Refacted Light Silk Crepe de Chine, sure. Um, this is it here. It's very beautiful, of course, because it's silk and it's Liberty, but I love the colours in that. And hopefully you can kind of see the scale of it as well. It's very beautiful. Um, and then I'm making a workwear capsule wardrobe and looking for a little layering top to go underneath blazers. I like the Ogden cami, but I'm on the curvy side and the Ogden just doesn't work even with adjustments. 
Um, so the Ogden does also now come in a like the curve size range or with a D cup size range as well. So it might be that that could be an option. Or the other one to look at is the Cashmere Webster top, which is kind of similar. It's probably got a few more options in it. Um, and the cashmere patterns, of course, come with all the different cup size options as well. So it's maybe easier for you to get a, 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 a fit like straight away as opposed to having to adapt the pattern because you can pick the cup size that is most best suited to you. Um, and then the last few questions were, would you go for the Lyra or the NYX dress? So this is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra or the Closet Core NYX. Um, I like them both. The NYX has elastic in the waist, so it sort of pulls in a little bit more, even though it's quite gathered and blousy on top. And I have to admit that when I do wear my Lyra dress, I tend to wear it with a belt just because I like something to be a bit more fitted at my waist. Um, so it depends. So that's like a difference to sort of look for. The sleeves are also quite different as well. The, the NYX has got a gathered sleeve, whereas the Lyra's has the Lyra got a placket? No, it doesn't. The Lyra is just gathered as well, isn't it? Okay, so the sleeves are kind of similar. Um, I suppose it depends how much fitting you want at the waist. Um, and then the best fabric for the Lyra, which I have not yet made. I think a cotton lawn is nice or a viscose. Both work really well. So it would maybe depend on how how experienced you were, how confident you were with working with those types of fabrics. Cotton lawn is going to be easier to work with than a viscose. Then the viscose will like drape and swish a little bit more. The cotton lawn will hold its fullness and structure a bit more. Um, and then the last one was at 9.01. Um, plain jersey for a plain tee, either at the Frankie Baseball, which I think is in one of the Tilly books, or the Closet Core. Um, and it needs stretch. I'm just going to suggest the, it's a nice classic again, it's just the plain basics organic cotton jersey range that we've got. We've got lots of colours as well, um, which makes it really nice and easy to get. You know, if you were going to do like different one for the sleeves and the bodice, then there's lots of mix and match options there and you know, they're all going to be the same sort of weight. So the range is the basics organic cotton jersey. So if you just search that on the website, then you'll see all the colours from that range. Um, and then, yeah, lots of nice combinations there. So um, if anybody's got any other last minute questions that you quickly want to ask, please do so now. Um, somebody's suggesting the Seamworks or Betel top is great for layering and it's free. Um, okay, I think I've caught up with everything now. So yeah, if you if you missed it before, or you've only sort of joined recently, this is gonna this is like the second last live that I'm gonna do before I just take a bit of time out. Um, with my baby being due soon. Um, so I'll be here next week at eight o'clock live with you. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna leave you in the capable hands of the G&G team who are still gonna be doing Q and A's for you. They just, they won't be live, but we will release the video at eight o'clock on a Monday. So it means if you like having something to watch at eight o'clock on a Monday from the world of fabric and patterns that is G&G, then you can still get that at eight o'clock on a Monday. It just won't be live, but it will still be as inspiring. Um, Cause we'll still be able to show you the new fabrics and answer your questions. It just won't be live. So all is not lost. Um, you're exhausted. Thank you for tonight again. I'm like getting out of breath now. Uh, I definitely need to sit down. Um, Thank you for your thanks, everyone. I, I'm also like really trying to stave off a cold right now and I can hear my voice is getting really croaky now. So hopefully I actually have a voice for you next Monday because um, that has happened to me before. My voice just disappears. But yeah, have a good evening, everyone. Have a good week. I'll see you next Monday. For the last, the last Q&A before, oh, it's not forever. I'll be back again. You know, I can't stay away for too long. Um, but yeah, I'll see you next week anyway. Okay, bye.